you are trying to put your Pico 8 game on LexLawful.com and I'm going to show you how. I've seen a lot of devs not putting their Pico 8 games on LexLawful.com, on the LexLawful BBS as we call it. And I think the problem is it's kind of like an easy feature to miss. And I think some devs also don't really know why, what the advantages are. LexLawful.com is the central authority when it comes to Pico 8 cards. It's the beating heart of the Picoverse. A lot of the devs and of course the developer of Pico 8 himself are hanging out there and giving each other feedback, but it's more than just a discussion forum. Uh, LexLove.com, the BDS, is actually uh, deeply integrated into Pico 8 itself. So you might be familiar with Splore, which is this integrated tool in Pico 8 where you can download cards from the internet. The cards in this tool are taken from the LexLove BBS. So all of the cards that you see show up here have been posted to the Lex of BBS. That's how you get into Splore. There's really only just a few uh, reasons why you wouldn't want to be on the BBS. One reason is that BBS does not support multi-card projects. So if your card uses multiple cards, then it won't be supported by BBS and so you have to upload it somewhere else. Some people also choose not to use the Lexilofl uh, BBS because um, the games will be available for free and they want to sell their games. That later part is I don't think a really good reason because I think even in this case you might want to consider uploading a uh, demo of some sort and if protecting your source code is important then there's always obfuscation. With that out of the way let's move on and show you how it gets done. All right, so I prepared a little project here. <laughs> I've cleaned out my, my Pico 8 directory. I have my game called mygame.p8 and I want to get this on Lexalawful. First, I'm gonna load my game. This is what it looks like. It's basically a modification of my uh, breakout tutorial. If you wanna program this game, then I have a whole tutorial explaining how it gets done. So first we have some prep work to do. I want to export this as a p8.png file. And the way to do this is to type in save, not export, save my game, whatever your game is called, dot pn, oops, png. If you do this, you might get an error match like this, warning you that there is no label image. Uh, so I'm gonna explain to you right now what a label image is and how to set it up. If you already know that, you can skip over this part. Okay, Pico 8 cards are kind of like pretending to be cards of a console. And one feature of cards of consoles is that they have little images on them, little labels that kind of tease what kind of game is on that card. And so before publishing uh, Pico 8 projects, we have to create those images for our Pico 8 projects as well. This sounds more complicated than it really is. All we need to do is really just run the game. And whenever there is something interesting on the screen that we think might uh, make a good uh, card image, we just press F7. And there it is, we captured the card image. The title screen is a good candidate for that, but a good alternative is also showing uh, a bit of gameplay so people know what it is, what kind of game it is. Afterwards, all we need to really do is to save and we have saved our card image. Card images are used in a variety of situations. One place where they pop up is in the background uh, when you browse through cards on Splore. And if you do, you sometimes notice that some of the cards have actually pretty elaborate uh, images that actually maybe are not really popping up anywhere in the game. They seem to be uh, additional content. That's a bit of a trick that is a little bit outside of the scope of this little short tutorial, but I will post down in a doobly-doo a link to a, a post on lexlove.com explaining how to get your own graphics into the card image. For now, let's move on. All right, now that we have captured the card image, we can try this again. We're gonna go save dot png. So it says here it saved it as mygame.p8.png. And in fact, if you bring up the folder, you see mygame.p8 and mygame.p8.png. What is the difference between the two files? Well, basically these are two different ways on which Pico8 saves Pico8 projects. The original version, the mygame.p8, uh, that's a file that can be read with a text editor. So it's really good if you want to write your game, edit your game while you're working on this game. This is a really good format to save your project in. This new one is a bit of a tricky thing. It looks like an image. That's because it is an image. So this is one of those Pico 8 mind blowing things. Uh, all of the information, all of the source code, all of the graphics, all of the music is encoded into an actual PNG image. So in this case, I opened the uh, image in Photoshop and you can see that it just works. I can just open it like an, a regular image file and you can also see how the data is stored. When I zoom in, there's a bit of a noise in the image. There's a bit of grain, right? 
that's that's a bit of a noisy image. It's not just pure the pure uh, blue of the background, and that's because uh, that's the information. That's where all of your program, all of your data, all of your code has been encoded in and has been compressed, and then encoded as a little bit of noise in an image. So you can still see the image, uh, but if you load it up in Pico 8, Pico 8 can parse this noise and change it into readable code and the graphics that you've created. And the music. This can be a really good way of sharing your files and uh, archiving your files because the image of the card will tell you which project this is. One thing to note is that now that we've saved it as mygame.p8.png, it will save as that file. Again, we have now duplicated the project. We have two copies of the same project and it's very important that we not get them mixed up with each other. There's one more little bit of prep work that I like to do and that's taking screenshots and animated GIF of our game. So I will run the game. And just as before, where we took the card image, by pressing F6, you will take a screenshot. And by pressing F9, uh, it will save an 8 second uh, animated GIF to the desktop. I think a good approach is to sample like three different places in a game to show people kind of like the variety of screens uh, to give them an idea what the game loop looks like. The star screen may be a good place of doing this, but you might also want to show some of the gameplay, obviously. Another good place uh, would be also showing the game over screen or some kind of congratulations, you know, level one screen to kind of show you where the game is heading. Time to actually upload our game. We're gonna go to lexalovel.com. We're gonna click here on Pico 8. We are going to... Some, something you have to do here is you have to actually create an account and log in. I think if you have, if you own Pico 8, you probably should already have an account. And if you haven't yet, then you should create an account here. You should see your face and your nickname over here in the corner. The button that a lot of people are missing is here in the, the main menu. There's a button called Submit. So you're gonna click that. And, it, and there's a form here that we have to go through in order to upload our cartridge. The first thing that it asks us is um, to create a kind of like an ID, which is like a unique identifier that is associated with our game. This can be any kind of word, any kind of sequence of numbers. In fact, there's even like a button here to just randomize it if you really don't care about this. My game test. All right, so we have my game test here. Now it actually wants us to upload the game. There's two different ways of doing this and the one that we prepared is up here. Uh, so it asks us select a cartridge file pa.png to upload. And then there's a button here, you can click that and you can navigate through where your card is. But you can also like, that's something I like to do. I can just drag and drop the p8.png file, the one with the image. I can drag and drop it onto the button and that, then it will land here. Um, th there's this one here, this method here, it says like, okay, if the type something in the pico8 command line and then it gets copied into the clipboard and you can paste it in here. Uh, you can do that too, but we're just gonna ignore this. Uh, you have to click this box, obviously, and then you can start to upload. The game has been uploaded. You can see the image already showing up here. Something we have to do now at this point is maybe to give our game a title and name. My game test. Uh, please ignore. Save. There's two checkboxes here that uh, we have to deal with. One checkbox is um, to submit the game under a Creative Commons license. Um, that will basically mean that people can reuse, remix, and share our cart uh, as long as um, it's not commercial and if they say that we created it, like in with, con with the attribution. Uh, I think it's a good way, good thing to click this box because it contributes to the com community, but you don't have to. This is something I'm less excited with, about. So this will allow other websites to link to, to directly embed games from Lexalawful on their websites. And I'm not really happy with that one. So I usually don't check this box. If I want my game to show up on other websites, I want to have a say on that. Now we're not done here. We want to actually, it will, we have to actually create a thread on the forum for the card to actually start showing up. So we're going to create this thread here with a, with a button here. 
If you ever created a thread on a forum, this should be familiar. It's just a box for you to type in a lot of text, and this will then appear as a post on alexaloft.com on the forums, on the BBS. Uh, one thing to note is that there's a very neat formatting help button here. This will give you uh, hints on how to uh, make your post a bit prettier, you know, um, add headlines or um, embolden things, insert YouTube videos, insert uh, um, t links to tweets, uh, formats like um, code. There's already something written in the text uh, already. That's, that's this MyGate test zero. That's actually the embedding of the actual game. And um, in order for the game to actually show up, you have to embed this game in a forum post. And this is the code that does that. Also, another thing that we might be useful here uh, in the category up here, we can select in which category the post will be posted, and this may affect where the uh, cartridge shows up in uh, the explore menu, actually. So in the explore menu, you see some categories. There's work in progress, there's collaboration, jam, and just like new releases. And depending on which category you put your game in the BBS, it will show under different categories. So if you put it in the jam category, it will show up in the jam category. Typically, you want to put uh, your games in the cartridge category. The other categories are a bit weird, a bit of a ghost town. They're not really used that often. Cartridges is usually the place to go. So I wrote here a little bogus text here to exemplify what a post like this would look like. Something I wanted to show maybe also how to add an image to the post because that's a bit weird. Uh, you click on the add image button up here. Then we're gonna grab some of the GIFs that we prepared. Let's take this one. We drag and drop it on the button again. We use the same trick. We click on upload. Now the image is here. And in order to actually get it into the post, we have to click the insert into post button. And then that will uh, insert like this little text snippet into our in, into the, the text. And that will be the image and we can move it around and put it to wherever we need it. All right, so this is my post that I created here, just like a sample post to kind of show you like what kind of structures, what kind of information you want to put in your post. So I have a bit of an eye catcher here. I uploaded the GIFs that we recorded earlier, and this is kind of like a way of um, giving people an idea what the game is all about to kind of encourage them to actually try the game out uh, without them having to actually click on it and play them themselves. I think this is like a very good immediate way of conveying what the game is about. And there's like four sections here that I, <laughs> this is some bogus text, this is not really written. Uh, I have uh, four sections I think every game should have. First, I think it's very important to explain the controls, what actually you have to people have to press in order to do something in a game. Uh, this may seem obvious to you as a game developer because you have been working on this for such a long time, but uh, you'll be surprised how uh, unintuitive controls can be. So I think it's a good way to just like, you know, uh, shift a gear down and explain, you know, very basic controls for everybody to um, to get on board with the game. This is usually when people are getting the game and uh, bounce right out. It's because they press buttons, nothing happens, and they're like, ah, screw this, and then just go to a different game, right? So I think it's very important to put this as a top priority to explain the controls. Now, the thing is with controls is that people, once they understand how they do something in a game, they can often figure out the rules on themselves. So that's, that's why the rules are the next lower priority. Like once people understand the controls and can figure it out, you can maybe leave them be, but in case they still don't get the rules, then the next section would be explaining the rules. And again, the same strategy as before, you shift down, you have to uh, imagine the person to be uh, some kind of somebody who has no context whatsoever, who never maybe played this game before, who, for whom you have to really explain the very core basics in a simple, understandable way. And so finally, there's the third part here that I think is very important for Lex Luffle. This is a place where a lot of fellow developers are hanging out. And something that you want to consider is what kind of information do those other developers want to have? And a very obvious thing that other developers might be interested in reading is how the game was created, what were the problems with the game, what did go wrong, what did go well, what kind of issues did you encounter, how did you solve the issues, maybe there's some kind of uh, behind the scenes like um, concept art, maybe in intermediate prototypes that you developed. Uh, all of this stuff is greatly interesting to other developers and you will get a lot more engagement with your, with your game if you share with them this information. This means that you actually have to document your project while you're developing. So yeah, that's something that you to really consider while you're working on your game. 
And finally, very important at the end to add some credits. What's the contact information? Where can people reach you if they want to know more about this? Um, what are some other things that you developed? Um, how many people work on this project? Link their work as well. I think this is a very important section to have that you should not skip. And I'm showing you all of this because something I see is people just upload the game and then they have like this empty uh, box here where they have to write this post and they just basically say, this is my game, lol. Oh, what do you think? And post. And that's just not how it works. That's not how you publish your work. That's not how you get feedback from your work. In order to engage with the audience, you have to put some effort into, you have to present it in a, in a matter that's understandable for other people. And you have to share with them some information. You have to reach out to your audience in order to get something back. All right, we're happy with this post and we're gonna just click on publish. And now the game is published, actually, it's actually already published, I have to delete it real quick. Uh, there's a bit of a problem here where um, this uh, screen wasn't wide enough, so one of the screens jumped down. And now if you go to Splory, you can actually see, and this is my game test, please ignore by Chris Man. This is actually my game uh, showing up in Splory because I uploaded it to alexalawful.com. Also, as you notice, maybe at my close, I traveled back in time to show you one more little trick that I think is very important, and that is how to submit updates to already existing cards that you upload it previously and you do it the same way you just click on a submit and here instead of clicking upload cartridge you see there is instead this tab select cartridge to update we're gonna use that and here you can see all of the cards that you ever uploaded at this point I already deleted the post with my game test um, but it's still here and I can click on update and from here on it's a very similar procedure you just drag and drop the um, p8.png file you agree to the light terms of use, you upload. Something you have to do at some point is also you will get, um, like um, you can see this says now my game test minus two. This refers to like a new version of this um, of this um, of this card. And you would have to paste in this text, my game minus two, into that forum post uh, that was about, you know, the publishing of your game to update the game that's embedded into the actual post with the new version. Otherwise, you know, everything is uh, as we've shown previously. This is it, this is how you upload games to the Alexa Love BBS. There's two other websites that I usually upload my Pico 8 games to. That's gonna be Itch and Newgrounds. And I've created separate videos explaining you how to do that. So you probably should check them out. Otherwise, see you guys next time, bye bye.